I just uh, give you an introduction to audience. Uh, so welcome to this uh, fourth series, uh, fourth seminar in uh, big data and emergency management project, BDM project uh, seminar series. Uh, our uh, today's speaker is uh, Professor Song Guo uh, from uh, Hong Kong Polytechnic University. Uh, uh, he is uh, 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 head at the uh, Department of Com uh, Computing at the uh, Hong Kong Polytechnic University. Uh, uh, earlier, he was a professor at uh, University of Aizu, Japan. Uh, he uh, obtained his PhD from uh, uh, University of Ottawa. Uh, his research interests are uh, mainly in the area of big data, cloud computing, mobile computing, and distributed systems. Uh, uh, he is also uh, editor-in-chief of uh, IEEE Open Journal of Computing uh, society or co computer society. Uh, he was also a distinguished lecturer at uh, different IEEE communication society um, events. It served in the IEEE computer society board of governors. Uh, today he's going to uh, speak about age learning for distributed uh, big data analytics. Uh, it's theory, algorithms, and uh, system design. So welcome everyone for this seminar. And now floor is yours, uh, Dr. Song. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Rangendra. Thank you for the nice introduction. And it's my uh, great pleasure to uh, meet everyone here online virtually. Actually, I'm, I visited um, Songdal a couple of times in past years and, and hopefully everything uh, recovered uh, we can meet again in person. So today I'd like to uh, share some of our um, research results on edge learning. Uh, so first of all uh, I'd like to uh, acknowledge uh, the, the, the project so this report uh, is based on the project on edge learning, the enabled technology for distributed, distributed big data analytics in cloud edge environment. Uh, we have collaborators of local um, universities and other uh, mainland China companies. And also I'd like to uh, thank all the members in our group. We have so far uh, many PhD students, postdocs, uh, working around this uh, topic with very good um, uh, results. So first of all, um, I would like to give a boundary of our scope. Uh, the Edge AI actually is a, is a very special um, emerging applications in, in the Edge Cloud environment. Uh, in here, we are specially uh, defined our objective is uh, about edge devices, for example, uh, smartphone sensors um, to train and influence machine learning models. So related to both edge devices and also uh, machine learning related tasks, not general um, applications. So, um, some new features uh, actually for uh, deep learning models, running inferences, uh, training processes uh, will, will um, bring many uh, new challenges and that is different from the previous um, computing. So here in my talk, so first of all, uh, I'd like to give um, a detailed introduction about what is the edge learning. And then um, I will uh, make analysis on the main challenges. And uh, because of time, I only uh, give a very few uh, examples uh, to 
study uh, the real challenges and how what is the approach that we have tried and what is the results and finally I give the conclusion and uh, point mm -hmm. out several uh, I think it's very promising uh, research directions. So for part one, uh, actually I would have a give the background from machine learning, deep learning, evolve until the, uh, the recent edge learning. That is the background. And then uh, because of the later discussions on the challenges, I will give some preliminary knowledge about uh, edge learning. And finally, if you're interested in, in this direction, I will share with you some of the um, development environment tools, libraries uh, that can use uh, to de develop your own uh, algorithms and methods um, for, for the new AI, for the new Edge AI applications. Okay, so here, uh, machine learning, compared to the traditional programming uh, I, I just give a, a, a very uh, co uh, co a conceptual uh, comparison of traditional programming model and the machine learning model. And here, uh, traditionally, if you if you have data, uh, normally you have an algorithm, right? And the algorithm defines a set of rules and how to use the rules to uh, process the data and eventually generate uh, the result. Uh, for the machine learning, actually, we don't we don't have uh, the rules, specific rules. We just have some experiences. We have answers of the old questions, similar questions, and then we use the data and the available answers uh, to find out some internal uh, patterns or um, models that we can use. Uh, we, we can we can we can build up from the data, and eventually uh, we can answer uh, new questions. So we'll see from here. We have answers of solve the problems, we have data, and we eventually derive, derive some rules. And you can, you can imagine that rules could be described as any machine learning model. And eventually uh, the model will be used as long as the input data, new data, to generate the answer. So that is um, machine learning. Uh, if we look at the machine learning general, uh, it includes uh, two phases, training and inference. The training is we have data, right? We have the data corresponding answers, for example, the labels. And then we use uh, data and answers to train something and eventually we got the model. Okay, the model could be anything. Um, for example, in here, uh, could be a, a neural network, all right? The basic idea is that uh, the generated answer from the neural network should be as close as to the given answers of the training data, right? And eventually the model could be used in the second phase uh, inference or usage of the model, right? And, and a given data without any solutions, without the label, and then we can uh, upon uh, the calculated, the uh, established model to find out uh, the answer. All right. And that is the basic idea, uh, and, and you will you have probably uh, witnessed that uh, in the recent decade, we we have um, so many um, artificial intelligence applications in different domains, in agriculture, uh, agriculture, transportation, healthcare, manufacturing, and everything actually, right? And you may wonder uh, what is the uh, uh, drive factors to make it happen. So basically, I think the first factor is uh, the algorithm. Uh, you, you, you see from the evolution from the uh, early, early, early uh, artificial intelligence in 1950s until just one decade ago, uh, deep learning um, make a lot of breakthrough uh, because of uh, the new um, algorithms, uh, new uh, architectures introduced, and and that makes the application a AI applications possible. The next factor is um, we need we need uh, lots of data for training, right? And um, you will see uh, data increasing exponentially, right? And most of data um, in the past is not available, but now um, because of the uh, devices, 
because of the data we uh, generated from the devices, uh, those data could be used uh, to train um, big model. Okay, you will see here, not just the scale of data, but also um, model scale. Just uh, in, in the last year, uh, the number of parameters of a, of a, of a, of a machine learning model is about seven, uh, uh, 70 billion number of parameters. And that is very powerful for uh, NLP applications, for example. The last, last factor is that we have uh, algorithm, we have big data, and how make um, the training process uh, in, a reasonable, in a reasonable time, right? And that is the uh, cloud computing uh, virtualization um, um, technology. The basic idea is that um, not just training on a single machine. Uh, we, we have a pool of resources and using virtualization technique, uh, we, can, um, we can just invent as much as possible number of uh, devices for parallel computing. Okay, so that is the reason uh, the cloud intelligence make uh, possible a wide range of uh, AI applications. But uh, this approach, even though it's very successful, have the limitations uh, I just summarized uh, in, in the following uh, issues, uh, acquisition, okay? And because as mentioned, data increasing exponentially, right? And if you, uh, you apply the centralized cloud intelligence approach, you have to upload uh, the users uh, into the cloud. And, and because of um, data always generated, right? You have to keep the data uh, fresh uh, for the inference. For the for for the new um, new model update, so um, this is bit, will be a, a big challenge, right? And and later I will give you some number to see. Um, actually, data cannot be uh, transferred uh, from from the edge uh, to the central. Others uh, like uh, computation, uh, maintenance uh, restrictions uh, make the cloud uh, intelligence uh, limited in applications. Uh, just uh, give another example. Um, data you have to uh, share it into the cloud, right? The people with concern uh, security, especially in, in Europe, uh, there is a, a legal liabilities. People may not allow their personal um, confidential um, data to be uh, uploaded or shared with others, right? So, uh, in summary, there is a, in the past years, um, there is a, a trend from cloud intelligence to edge intelligence. I think um, the basic uh, bottleneck comparing these two diagrams is that um, the cloud uh, has a very limited um, bandwidth, even though they're increasing every year, but increasing uh, linearly compared to the exponential uh, generation of data volume. And, and you will see in some point, uh, we cannot to make uh, prompt inference or training uh, by uploading everything into the cloud. The second uh, constraints is about the latency. So if everything is in the, in the central cloud, um, you have to upload the raw data for inference and eventually after calculation, the output uh, will be returned back to the users, right? And the round trip travel uh, take a, a relatively long time. So um, this is not uh, desired for some advanced AI applications in autonomous driving, for example. And uh, they cannot um, provide a millisecond uh, um, uh, or even lower latency in the cloud scenario okay and also uh, privacy is a concern so um, basically um, we, we, we see that um, right now the edge intelligence will be uh, a very important complementary uh, uh, approach for uh, AI applications especially for those um, special applications right and 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 you will see from the prediction by Garner, uh, Edge AI recently is on the peak, uh, which means it is uh, very, very hot and is almost mature. And in the past five years, there will be lots of products, companies, 
uh, using edge AI applications. So the principle of edge computing um, naturally facilitates distributed edge learning by leveraging uh, edge device resources, right? You may wonder um, the computation power. Uh, actually, we have a large number of devices and, 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 and it will see if using uh, advanced um, technologies, um, data could be uh, processed locally and the speed could be uh, acceptable when um, we can uh, encourage a large number of uh, devices to join. So uh, the basic idea, idea is, is to do um, the partition. And for example, we have data and the data is already distributed in the machines, in, in the devices, right, edge devices. And we don't uh, transfer the, the raw data. Actually, we just uh, uh, download, for example, some machine learning um, model into the PC or is it into the devices where uh, the, the partition uh, locates. So instead of transfer raw data, but also, but just a very tiny uh, program in, 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 into each devices for the, for the collaborative training. So my basic idea is, uh, is um, uh, we have uh, local devices, right? And we don't share because of the privacy and the, uh, the local data stay on the on the location where uh, they generated, um, actually the the central cloud just um, coordinates a large number of uh, users. Uh, they can uh, train uh, local uh, models in parallel. Um, the basic idea is that um, they don't talk to each other. The devices don't talk to each other. They have their own data, and that data will not be shared and using uh, the optimization machine learning algorithms to update, okay? So eventually, uh, in order to achieve a global uh, apply, appliable uh, model, and, and the local train the model will be uploaded instead, and then the, the server will do an aggregation, all right? And an aggregated model will be um, broadcast uh, to, to the, the local machines, uh, for update. So in this way, uh, iteratively, uh, we each 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 um, devices will do some uh, computation contributions without sharing anything, and and eventually um, a very uh, accurate model could be uh, generated. So this is um, the basic idea, and, and this is very famous uh, idea of um, um, federative learning. So if you look at the limitations uh, compared to the cloud, uh, you will see the data acquisition, computation, maintenance, maintenance and the restrictions all gone. No such uh, worries in, in the edge. And, uh, and compared to the cloud, uh, the new challenges, the new challenges that uh, in, in the edge environment, the, the work node is not stable, um, it easier got failed, uh, uh, for, uh, um, fault or because of the movement, uh, they can just uh, run out of the range without joining uh, the collaboration. And, and other challenges like uh, data is not sharing, right? Uh, originally data is sharing the cloud. So data is, um, um, is we call it, is, uh, is homogeneous, uh, distributed. But now data cannot be, share, uh, be shared and the data is heterogeneous and then the, uh, the, the resulting training accuracy could be much, much uh, compromised and how to uh, develop new algorithms to mitigate the issue. And also um, privacy security because uh, the, the, the devices um, is very easily got uh, compromised, right? Without much uh, powerful protection. All right. Um, so um, that is the um, background about uh, edge learning and the basic edge learning framework. And, and here is adi additional um, uh, preliminary knowledge about um, 
machine learning algorithm. I just give one example. Actually, um, we can try different ways. You may you may you may wonder um, these machines um, how to how how they update the model, right? So the basic idea is that uh, they they can you they can define some loss function, and the loss function uh, is to evaluate uh, the accuracy of the model. Okay, and objective is uh, to find out the parameters phi, uh, the parameters, and eventually uh, make the prediction um, uh, as as accurate as possible. So um, the objective is to minimize this objective function, right? And you can use the gradient design algorithm uh, to find out the best settings of the parameters. So basically, um, we have uh, local machines, each machine running the algorithm, something like that, right? And after iterations, you will see the iterations, they will uh, minimize the, the loss function, right? So for several steps, uh, the parameter setting from uh, this point uh, to this point. But the update, updated value is only based on the local uh, small number of training data. And obviously, uh, you may consider um, that is not generalized enough. So um, after uh, each round of the um, update, um, each node will uh, transmit the current fundings of the parameters. And, and they will be aggregated at the cloud, at a, a server. And the server will, for example, they do average, OK? And eventually, after uh, the aggregation, the output will be sent back. And then each uh, users will run uh, this algorithm, optimization algorithm again using the local. Okay. Eventually, uh, all, the, all, all the users are collaboratively to find out the global minimum value. Okay. So this is the basic idea. And if you um, apply the idea into um, the federative uh, averaging algorithm, just like this, uh, we just show a uh, linear regression as an example. And we have three uh, workers, and they have their own data, right? And originally, um, this is the global model will be uh, transmit, uh, will be broadcast to all users. They, all, they, they will use their own uh, data for uh, a linear regression update. And this is the a new model, which is fit very well uh, to the local data. Okay, but this is not necessary to be good enough for the global global uh, data. So eventually, um, the local updated model will be uploaded into the cloud and the, uh, into the server, and so we do aggregation, and then the aggregated, for example, this is the average average model uh, will be sent back, and then uh, the worker will continue. So this is just the, uh, just the idea. And um, the, the previous example shows the uh, client server mode uh, in, in, in this um, parameter server um, architecture, we have a central cloud, uh, we have a central server, they were clapped. And after receiving all the updates, they do application and then broadcast uh, round by round. But in some cases, so we also using uh, decentralized architecture, they just talk to the neighbors, okay? They, sh they will transmit uh, their local uh, model and then all neighbors receive um, the, na the, the neighboring models and do aggregation. And after aggregation, they broadcast. Not uh, flooding, just their neighbors, okay? Uh, in, in this way, eventually uh, all the users, all the uh, participants can also converge um, to a global model. And this is also called the P2P uh, architecture. Okay. Uh, some other uh, important I, uh, uh, concepts is, uh, uh, as we studied, um, the optimization is by runs, right? And this is the local iterations uh, doing the local update. Uh, and at the end of the processing, they will update the model into the cloud uh, into the server, right? And server do synchronization and and, and by many, many runs, uh, eventually um, the problem will be solved. The model will be um, completed.
it's very nice and we can theoretically prove that uh, these methods uh, can guarantee the convergence of the optimization problem but the the, the, the issue you can you can also notice that some of the worker work very fast but they have to um, to wait for others right so even though um, you finish your job you cannot go to the next round you have to wait the slower uh, to report and eventually the global updates received and then you can go to the next round so this is not very efficient um, some update some uh, improvement uh, probably can allow um, the fast workers to continue for example you can allow them to uh, just after uh, the completion they just report on to the to the server and the receiver don't need to wait everything they just do a partial aggregation so once uh, the partial aggregation is done and that results will be immediately sent back to that particular client client and in this way um, the the waiting time could be removed somehow um, but but of, of course uh, eventually the convergence uh, the model accuracy could be compromised the reason is that the slower uh, will introduce some stale uh, not uh, stale information it will drag down um, of the of the training directions right the last is a is a bit um, analysis on the on the on the convergence uh, performance so basically um, uh, we are studying how fast of um, the training until they converge the converge means uh, after a uh, couple of rounds and 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 the loss decreasing is minimum for example is um is, is approaches to zero something like that so um normally we do uh, the analysis uh, for example uh, we would like to see um to compare uh, the, the the loss as a function of uh, the number of iterations so we have a, a set of um definitions uh, but basically uh, look at this example and t is the number of iterations and omega is the setting means the parameter after t number of iterations and this is the loss function and this is the global optimal solution and we see the gap uh, eventually if the gap um, approaches to zero when uh, the number of iterations goes to infinity right but we we have to uh, derive uh, the order for example big o uh, in terms of um, polynomial of t and if you see that um, this is uh, convergence speed is low and and, and go this way um, the convergence speed is fast so eventually uh, you have to prove um, the order um, how fast and, and indeed the algorithm will uh, converge Normally, uh, we have a set of uh, assumptions to use, uh, and all these assumptions widely acknowledged. and And you can you, you can you can um, actually derive um, the order uh, from uh, the basic equation. Right. So I'll finish the background. And lastly, if you're interested in um, distributed machine learning, edge learning, uh, we have lots of uh, APIs, libraries, and machine learning platforms. And so far, uh, the famous one is the PyTorch and the TensorFlow, and of, of course, and the many others. Uh, I also compared their uh, products features and and shapes and applications okay. lots of applications using um, the edge AI already uh, on the device so 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 far you will see a uh, lots of um, uh, AI chip uh, equipped it um, devices have um, very powerful uh, AI uh, inference capabilities just like uh, uh, CV uh, monitoring uh, uh, object 
uh, detection, something like that. All right, um, if you're interested, I also uh, recommended uh, a list of uh, reading materials on the general uh, basic idea of this new uh, research topic. Now, um, I'd like to go a little bit further uh, from the edge uh, AI uh, to the uh, scientific research issues. So here I'd like to um, give um, the analysis on the challenges. Okay. So actually there are many, many challenges. And today I just uh, pick up uh, one or two examples to, uh, to elaborate um, how we can uh, tackle those challenges. So here, um, I give a, a, a big picture about um, Edge AI environment. We have a large number of devices, uh, Edge devices like uh, uh, mobile phones, uh, mobile devices, and IoT devices like uh, uh, vehicle uh, mounted devices, um, sensors and cameras, something like that. And you will see that uh, each of these devices has the capability of storage, computation, and communication, but with very limited uh, resources available. And in the middle is uh, some um, edge, edge server. Okay, the edge server could be uh, um, some, some uh, relatively powerful machines or small clusters correlated uh, with the small small cell. So um, you can see that I'll be uh, in the middle layer. And, and the higher, high layer is the cloud computing data center, something like that. So some of the work, uh, if the delay is very critical, could be just running here, okay? If uh, delay is not an issue, data transmission is not an issue, you can, you can also use the traditional cloud uh, uh, intelligence, all right? Or uh, you can, you can um, partition, that is a very, uh, classic approach is some of the job um, executed in the local in the in the edge uh, some other part in the cloud or in the in the in the edge okay so this is the architecture and based on the uh, understanding of the architecture we have the following observations first is the resource constraints right and um, in here uh, it's about the communication. Communication uh, especially uh, important in the machine learning uh, algorithm is that when we're doing the training, when we're doing the training, uh, we need multiple rounds to um, refine the model, right? And each, uh, each round you have to share, uh, up, update the parameters. As I mentioned, the deep model could be uh, high dimension hundreds of billions of parameters, right? You have to submit the parameters uh, from the local to the, to the central, and that will be uh, significant. Next is about heterogeneous uh, hardware. Um, actually, the uh, heterogeneity is not just in the hardware. It, it could be also um, data distribution, right? Some of devices, um, has the has the um, distribution data distribution totally different matters. Some other machine with a, a powerful AI chips, but others don't have any. Um, um, probably just like a microcontroller. Okay, so they could be very highly diverse in hardware data um, uh, distributions. And here is about the privacy and the security, okay? And lastly, it's about the um, uh, incentive, okay? How, how, can you, how can you encourage devices to, to share their data, uh, to share their um, computation units uh, for collaborative learning, right? So here, um, Objective is to realize distributed edge learning in an efficient. Efficient means fast convergence and high accuracy of the training model. Secure, sustainable. Sustainable means uh, we can 
we, we can we can always um, have sufficient number of participants and a customized customized many um, perspectives for example um, the model could be customized the quality of service of the AI could be customized the model could be customized right many things so this is a, a summary about the challenges all right and I just give you a few uh, pieces of evidence to show why China, why the privacy security is indeed a challenge. Um, for example, uh, the, the data privacy. You may say, oh, the data is uh, not leaving, um, leaving the devices, the ad devices. Why the privacy is an issue? As I mentioned, you, you share the, 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 the model, right? And eventually uh, the, the central a server could have the global model and the global model they can do the reverse engineering to find out the possible uh, raw data uh, using the GAM for example and this is true and and obviously um, you, you, you may you may you may um, devise some new uh, ideas uh, to to um, to make the collaborative training possible but on the other hand we can be robust enough uh, for for the uh, uh, reverse um, uh, attack. Uh, this is the attack on the on the server. Uh, you can also imagine that some of the uh, users not uh, a trustful one. Um, they 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 would uh, um, on purpose inject some um, parameters uh, not the real uh, the real parameters. For example, a majority of users. Um, the parameter updates in this direction, but a compromise one or a, a attacker uh, just give a wrong direction or a much, much uh, different from others. And eventually the model generated from, by aggregating everything will, will uh, uh, deviate from the, uh, the real one, right? So that is called the model attack. Obviously there are many, many uh, uh, proposals uh, to uh, to this challenge. Heterogeneous hardware, I just show you um, one addition of the ARM uh, uh, chips. Uh, actually, uh, some of chips with a very high performance, uh, for example, uh, accuracy uh, or high performance computing, uh, high throughput. Uh, others will be uh, for um, a very, very short delay right so they are totally different and you have to consider uh, the hardware characteristic into into the um, resource management um, incentive okay incentive um, this is also a very interesting one uh, compared to the traditional when the user contribute in terms of data in terms of computation in terms of communication not necessary um, that particular user will be encouraged to join in the future because in, in, in a deep learning model um, training process is very hard uh, to see what is the real contribution of users right and this is hard to predict um, actually if uh, the user's contribution make the loss function or make the model accuracy improved and then we eat we deem that user uh, should be uh, get some reward and this is very hard to be um, to be um, quantified is there no no equations to uh, describe such uh, behavior and and probably um, um, even though um, we can we can we can observe some um, local updates but we cannot tell uh, in the run run, um, this uh, user will make the model um, faster converge or better uh, accuracy. So this is a very uh, challenging issue and recently my group is working on the online um, game game theory design uh, for, for, for the for the challenges. And just a summary uh, in, in different challenges we did some uh, results uh, we did some research and with some interesting output 
So if any of uh, the team members are interested in, in, the, in the topic, um, most of the paper is available on my uh, personal website. Uh, you can take a look and we have, um, we're very welcome to, to the students, to the members to join, to join our group uh, for further uh, discussion. All right, uh, so the rest of uh, the rest of talk, I think, uh, will be um, very fast um, because we understand the background. We, we know the challenges. And the lastly is to, um, to use some um, ideas to solve problems. And here I just give you a few examples how to um, how to solve the problems, um, the bottleneck, as I mentioned. The first example is about the inference latency. Okay, so uh, the idea uh, is to, for example, in the autonomous driving, um, we cannot allow the inference in the cloud. The inference actually in in the in the edge, but. But on the other hand, as I mentioned, the, the edge devices have very limited resources, right? And probably the local computation um, is not applicable. So um, there is a trade-off. Now we, we can see uh, from the computation power, from the memory, and also the, the lifetime uh, is very limited. And here is the, uh, the main memory. Um, capacity is much smaller than uh, a model, uh, the deep learning model. And, and this is the real uh, chips and the uh, real model size. So, um, for example, this is a very uh, uh, um, a representative uh, AlexNet in, in, the, in the early um, uh, layers uh, with uh, um, Computation layers, um, actually, uh, the computation is very efficient, right? So you will see uh, the delay is short, but the generated intermediate data, the feature um, generated by the layers is huge, is huge, is, is sometimes is, is bigger even than the raw data. But the, the, the last few um, layers, um, for example, the fully connected layers, uh, the intermediate is very small, but the computation is very uh, rich. You will see the delay is very long for the delay. So probably may consider uh, some of the layer in the in the beginning could be stay in the edge, right? And later on, uh, the intermediate data could be uh, quickly transmitted in somewhere uh, in, in the in the edge. And in the edge, some computation intensive can be done uh, faster in the cloud. Right, that is a very basic idea. So um, we we use this idea to formulate. Actually, we transmit uh, the uh, original um, DAN graph in, into a, a, a DAG, uh, and each node corresponds to a, a layer. And the the link, uh, we also assign the link um, as the computational time, either in the cloud or on the edge, and also the trans time when um, the, 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 the downlink a node uh, must be offloaded into the cloud and then the intermediate data has to be transmitted uh, through uh, the internet uh, through the the the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the communication uh, interface all right so we have um, Execution delay on the edge, execution delay on the cloud, and the transmission delay. Okay, so actually uh, using this idea, we can we can establish uh, construct a graph, and the graph uh, we can assign some of the no, some of the uh, links with the computational time on the cloud, some of the links with the computational time on on the edge, and other links connecting two nodes. As the transmission delay, and eventually we can transmit. We can transmit uh, the partition. Um, for example, the left the left portion will be running on the edge. The right hand side will be running on the cloud into a classical uh, short, uh, the minimum cut problem, and that will be very efficiently uh, solved. And uh, eventually, using our uh, idea, uh, we can actually uh, speed up the whole inference time. Um, 
the speed up uh, about two times uh, in 3G network and sometimes in up to five times in 4G network uh, running on the real environment. Okay, so uh, this is about uh, the inference. I just give you the idea. Well, for the training part, I think um, one of the um, important issues is about the communication, right? The communication, the communication, um, uh, lots of parameters need, need, needs to be updated, okay? Uh, this is the uh, very famous uh, federative average, okay? So if you have to e e iterate uh, each round and, and the, the model has so many uh, 8 billion parameters, obviously, on the communication time, um, sometimes will be the, uh, the major, uh, the major part, let us see. Um, the major, after the converge, in the whole converge uh, training process, most of times is in the synchronization, okay. So uh, we are looking at how we can speed up the synchronization part. So a couple of approaches, I'm not going to uh, show the details, but you can understand that one possibility is that you can do some compression, right? We have so many parameters, uh, probably you can do uh, uh, compression um, by quantization. For example, 32 bits go to just for, for example, how about one bit, okay? And then tens of um, um, the, 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 the compression ratio, right? And other one, it could be uh, reducing the number of operations. Okay, I, I see I share the parameters and I download that parameters uh, with lots of uh, operations. Can we just uh, cut some operations? And obviously uh, they can save a lot of bandwidth. Okay, but uh, both, both methods you consider you have to um, introduce some new algorithms, right? And you have to guarantee that the, 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 the new the optimi optimized algorithms can guarantee the convergence, right? So that's a very, very challenge. So um, I just uh, give one example uh, to see, uh, we do uh, operation reduction. So originally we have to report, every client needs to report, but now we just let a few number of clients to update, to report the local update. Others don't need to report. And, and then using um, our design, for example, some parameters, uh, if satisfies these settings, we can still prove um, our algorithm uh, will achieve the same convergence speed. Okay. And also by this way, uh, we can uh, run um, on, the, on the new environment to see that uh, by this way, we can improve the convergence speed, uh, convergence time of uh, 30%, for example. Well, obviously, we can use other methods and lots of uh, other uh, approaches. I'm not going to details, but in general, um, you have to you have to uh, make sure that the new uh, the new uh, algorithms can converge uh, in the best way that uh, it can uh, at least to keep the same convergence order. Uh, other uh, research um, possibilities that in the in the in the wireless communication environment we can do a better job. Uh, we can actually using the uh, the wireless communication characteristics into the um, uh, parameter exchange. And what we did uh, in the three layer architecture, actually uh, in the middle we introduced the broadcast. Okay, so in this way we can further uh, speed up the whole. Uh, um, convergence speed, but lots of uh, math involved. All right. So because of time, I just show you uh, some basic ideas. I'm not going to the uh, technical details. If you're interested, uh, I just show a uh, list a number of uh, papers. And lastly, um, uh, just uh, in one minute, I would like to close my com uh, my my talk. Um, we we, we discussed uh, the the issues of the performance uh, and data heterogeneity uh, and also incentive. And today, I uh, only focus on uh, the performance to make a fast, right? In the future, uh, if you're interested, uh, we have some uh, ideas 
to handle the data heterogeneity and to achieve better, uh, ac more accurate models. And also we will design new mechanisms to incentive um, users to join into the collaborative learning, uh, make uh, it uh, sustainable. All right, uh, thank you. Um, I will stop here. Any questions? Thank you, Song. It was a very interesting talk. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, now we have to do everything virtually. <laughs> so, uh, are there any questions? Actually, we have uh, uh, some uh, 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 papers I think we can do together, and later on, probably uh, this will be wonderful. Uh, big data uh, issues uh, is very highly related to our project. Yes, yes, sure. Yes. Uh, I think there are no questions or anybody has any question. If not, then I have one question. Uh, yeah. Uh, you, you spoke about this uh, age AI and the privacy uh, issue that is uh, uh, in the uh, usually in this heterogeneous uh, age devices and age servers uh, uh, re required to work collaboratively uh, uh, to give uh, computing powers. Uh, and in this case or in this process, uh, the uh, locally cached data and computing tasks uh, m might be sent to very uh, different or unfamiliar uh, uh, devices for further processing. So I think in that case, there is a key challenge of uh, uh, lack of relevant privacy preserving and uh, security protocols. Uh, so do you know any, uh, any other uh, mechanism <laughs> to protect uh, user privacy and secrecy from uh, being attacked in, in such case? Okay, so so actually we have some uh, studies on this area, security and privacy. I just uh, give you some very rough idea. So, so in in, in this way, uh, what we can do is to uh, if you if you uh, have some, we can we can apply some uh, differential privacy um, the the theory into this one. So we just allow. Um, the, the parameter update with a little bit uh, noise, for example, and 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 eventually, um, if the if the noise satisfies some distributions, and that will be canceled 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 after aggregation after the model will be um, trained. But but on the other hand, when you use it again, when you use it again, uh, because of uh, this new design, um, we can we can um, we can achieve, for example. Uh, some robustness, so that is a basic idea. So, in, in other words, the, uh, the 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 new mechanism design you have to um, to to be uh, uh, resilient uh, to to uh, some attacks. Okay, uh, I just uh, mentioned one one methods on the privacy, but obviously you can try uh, others like uh, the the hardware protected methods. So everything could be uh, running in the uh, in the in the um, uh, trust trust zone and and then the, the uh, privacy could be protected and in the in the security um, some methods are probably doing the anomaly detection right so if they they assume majority are trustful and they can do the filtering so in other words they just filled out uh, the, the the out peers uh, without doing the aggregation by in, including them right and eventually um, that this uh, this could be make the model uh, better. So that's a very rough. Actually, I just give you some uh, yeah yeah some big thinking of to deal with the the, the challenges. But uh, this is very hot areas. Uh, lots of new research results, um, and also um, if any group uh, members are, uh, are the expert in the security and privacy, I think uh, that is also very very important uh, direction. I think this homomorphic encryption can be
be of some use in this case. Yes, uh, you are right. Uh, that is uh, one of the methods. But the difficulty is that um, uh, most of the deep model um, involves uh, involves a, a very complicated uh, comp a computation, and the traditional one uh, is very very time consuming, and also we cannot guarantee. And so this is uh, some recently uh, doing some semi. Uh, um, And uh, I, I, uh, I I forgot the term, but, but it's a, a kind of approximation. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. So no further questions. Okay, then, then, then thank you very much, uh, uh, Song, for uh, this interesting presentation. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, and let us keep yeah, in touch. We understand. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to, to see all of you. Yeah, and, we have also some yeah. colleagues here from uh, DTRF project. Uh, Professor <laughs> Abhishek from India and his PhD student is also here. Uh, <laughs> so I think. Um, uh we will uh, yeah. virtually meet soon again for yeah. that uh, that project uh, we get a chance to meet everybody so yes corona yeah. was stopping everything right now so. yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for joining me <laughs> thank you it was a wonderful talk thank you for uh, doing that it's very nice I... <laughs> okay. okay thank you so much uh, yeah thank I you to, uh, yeah thank you yeah thank you much. And hopefully this year I have the opportunity to visit uh, all of you. <laughs> oh, well, let us hope so. Hope so. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And have thank a good you. Day, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye.